Recently, I dropped by Jay's place because I wanted him to give me his opinion on the Guardian TS120 Normal Edition. Now, Jay ended up making a video on it because he liked it. And for those of you who have not seen it, please check it out. As I was leaving, Jay asked me if I would be interested to give the Burson Funk Max Current, Pro Current Amp a try. This is an amp that has a signature on it. I told Jay the problem is if I made a review on it, some people will understandably doubt my review because it would be almost like a YouTuber incest relationship. You make a good video for me, I make a good video for you. Okay, did that sound weird? Scratch that. So I told Jay, what I can do is get my audio buddies to listen to it and share what they think about it instead of me reviewing it. But you know what? On second thought, why should I care about what those people who see the glass as half empty, what they think? If Jay was confident in his assessment of the TS120, I should also be confident in my assessment of the Funk Max <laughs> current power amp. After all, my credibility is on the line. If I'm not honest and cannot assess it accurately, then I will suffer the consequences. So I told myself, as long as I'm objective and accurate in my review, there is no problem. Many of you will be receiving this unit soon. And I invite you to share your experiences in the comments below. So my audio buddies, today we are going to talk about the Burson Funk Max Current Amp. By the way, when I, visit, when I visited Jay, they brought me out to eat the best Korean barbecue in Toronto. The meat, man, would just melt in my mouth. No need to chew. This Funk Max Current Power Amp, hmm, almost as good. But before we begin, even if you don't care about the Galleon TS120 amp, if you ever wish that your amp sounded smoother or had more bass, go check out my latest video on the Special Edition. In that video, I share part of the secret how I voiced the TS120 Special Edition to sound smoother, and you might be able to do it with your current amp. I'll link it in the first comment. Now, I have to admit, I was worried for Jay. In today's market, we have a gazillion affordable, amazing solid-state integrated amp. At my place, I have tons of them. And I can tell you, all of them sound very good. Jay faces the same problem as I did. My wife asked me at the beginning of my Guardian project, what do you have to offer that no one else has to compete? In my case, that my amp can has the ability to double in current in class A and has the best dynamics and bass you'll ever find in the tube integrated amp that uses KT88. Nothing on the market will beat it when it comes to power. So here I am wishing Jay he, he has something special too. And I'm glad to report, yes, there's one thing this amp does better than most other integrated amps in a desktop environment. I'll come back to that shortly. The $850 Burson Funk Max Current Amp is a modified version by Jay of the standard Burson Funk Amp. Who knows what he did? Maybe all he did was sign his name and then it started sounding good because of placebo. Man, I should have signed the Galleon too. This is a class AB 45 watt amp that uses Burson's proprietary power supply called the Max Current Power Supply. Man, what a creative name. For those who have not seen my video on the Burson monoblocks, my biggest issue with any amps that uses SMPS is they lack dynamics. My audio buddies call it chicken power, no power. The Burson monoblocks that uses the Max Current Power Supply is the first amp I've ever listened to that changed my mind. So my expectation was this max power supply will level up the Funk Max Current Amp. And yes, it did. It's incredible how technology advancement can bring such drastic changes. Come on, man. A power supply less than the size of a pack of cigarettes is still able to power this mini amp with good base authority. Who would have thought? Let me show you. The Topping LA90 power supply compared to the Burson, well, not that size matters, especially once you hide both power supplies behind the desk, but still impressive. Now, unlike the plain vanilla Funk, the Funk Max Current uses the top of the line Burson op amps. For those who are not familiar with Burson's op amps, think of it like tubes. You can significantly change the sound of the amp by changing them. 
you know, a bit like tube rolling. The Funk Max Current uses Burson's Vivid op amps, and from my experience, they lean towards clarity and are probably Burson's most transparent sounding op amps. Now, I guess Jay did more than just sign his name on it. So, let's start with the negatives. First, the pre-production sample I got makes a pop noise when I power it off. Not waking up my cat loud, but noticeable. I told Jay about it and hopefully they'll have it fixed in production. Second, the strength is a double-edged sword. The singer will stand a bit back. So, if you like that kind of in-your-face presentation, like the Klipsch RP600M, then hmm, this might not be your cup of tea. That slightly smoother laid-back presentation of this M might not be for you if you want that bright, sharp, forward presentation. A question of taste. Finally, the amp is optimized for a desktop environment or near view. So if you have the speakers too far away, the center image is not solid. I'll tell you a story a bit later. Now, let's move to the positives. Remember, there was one thing I mentioned in the beginning of the video that this amp does that is different from the other integrated amps. It is the depth of the soundstage. And usually on my desk, okay, there is no soundstage. Everything is just flat. But with this amp, I can hear the singer a bit further away from me. It's like, what the hell? That creates the perception of death. This is unique. Next, the amp sounds nothing like any other person's amp I've heard. You have a warmer tone, a smoother presentation, a pleasant sound that is non-fatiguing and great for long listening sessions. Detail, but not tilted up on the top end. Strong dynamic bass, a very balanced tone overall. If you like that smooth and a bit laid back presentation, yeah, yeah, put this on your audition list. So let me tell you two stories. To be as objective as possible, I invited my audio buddy, Mr. Cantor, to come listen to it. And I also brought it to Mr. Quartz's place. At my place, I had a hookup to the Civilized Sonata and Exosound DAC. I remember that day, I let Mr. Cantor listen to this Sabash A30A a new 100 watt integrated amp that comes with a DAC, DSP, equalizer, Bluetooth. Mr. Kanto was freaking out because for 500 bucks to get this level of sound, what else can you ask for more? Why bother buying anything else? Just get this and you're done. Honestly, I was kind of worried because I then put the Burson Funk Max current and if Mr. Kanto says the Sabash is better or if he says the Funk is slightly better, I cannot not share that with you because if you watch my past videos, I share the positives and negatives. I remember as I started the first note, Mr. Cantor was texting on his phone and the first note caught his attention and he had to put down the phone down and he said, wow, this is way better. I told Mr. Cantor, keep in mind, this funk does not have a DAC or Bluetooth. He said, it does not matter. This sounds so much better that the price difference is worth it. If you think about it, this unit, it's just, I say, about 100 bucks more than the normal funk, right? Guys, man, just the max power supply alone is worth more than that. And you get a big performance boost. Sure, if your budget is 500 bucks, the Sabash A38 is a very, 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 very good solution. Without a doubt. The funk max current is next level or even two levels up in terms of performance. So then I brought it over to Mr. Quartz's place. What we notice is, if we had it six or seven feet away, the center image is not solid. I told Mr. Quad, man, this amp is optimized for near field. So we keep bringing the speakers forward closer and closer, and then magic, man. The center image was solid. The speakers completely disappeared. The sound stage was crazy deep. I hear instruments seven to nine feet away from where I'm sitting. Mr. Quad loves how musical they sound. Well, what does he mean? What does he mean by musical? You know, this term has been overused to death. He said, you know, we listen all the time to systems that are $20,000 plus. Those kind of systems, we're constantly bombarded with information. We can hear every single detail. So much so that it distracts us from, mu from the music time to time. This amp has a simple sound. Sure, it has all the details if you listen carefully, but it is so balanced that it does not pull me out of the music. I just simply enjoy the music. That's what he meant by musical. Then we tested tracks with instruments and guys, this thing has bass. 
it had zero, zero problem driving his 86 dB Sonus Faber Concerto. I tried it on my Spendor S35R2 synthesis, Silverline Sonata, all no problem at all. The max power supply really kick ass. For Mr. Quad, if he lived in a condo, he said it's a no brainer. So let's end the video here now. Now please like the video and leave a comment to give Jay a helping hand as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you own an integrated amp, please let me know which one and do you have any plans on upgrading? Finally, remember, don't buy it because Thomas, Mr. Quad and Mr. Kanta like it. My preference has nothing to do with your purchasing decision. Buy it because the strengths I highlighted are what you are looking for. By the way, Jay, you're not getting this back, man, until you buy me Korean barbecue. All right, guys, till next time.